Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and uh, today I am showing you one of the semi-smart products, one of the many that I received and that's going to be this Matter compatible Wi-Fi switch uh, which is EU style as you can see the type is ZM106 and it comes in three different versions obviously there is a one gang version there is a two gang version and there is a three gang version so you can see the price is there and uh, yeah there is some promotion at the moment for a couple of days i'm not really sure when this video is going to go live but um yeah i mean it's a matter switch it's uh, uh you know it's well, obviously it supports Matter, so you can use it in Google Home and Alexa and Apple HomeKit as well. And um, it does require a neutral wire, so in that in that regard, it's not that special. And of course, you can you know set up automations in your home, uh, sorry, in your app, and you can use voice control from in all these uh, services as well. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up in, with my Google Home application, with my uh, Google Nest Hub as a uh, matter border router or thread border router but if you want to use it in for example in a Tuya system you don't have either any of the Google's Apple's or Alexa's uh, stuff you can also use a Zemi Smart M1 hub which is a uh, matter and Zigbee enabled hub which I did a review of okay so let's quickly look at the device I have. As I said, I've received two of them. So I have a one gang version and I have a two gang version and the two gang version I wired up uh, so we can use that for testing. But I can show you the one gang version. So from the outside, this is how it looks like. Um, so it has a matte switch plate. There is a dot here, but that's the side that you push. So basically the top of it is not hinged and you can click on this lower side and you can see that it has a very small amount of movement it looks like that basically just top plastic part just bends and it's fixed here on the top and um, and of course it's the same with the two gang version so it's a very little movement but there is a, like a physical switch but you really i mean yeah, you can push it in the middle as well, but you have to push it really hard. So you have to push it at the lower half of the switch. And on the back, you can see that you can unclip this whole bezel thing, which, uh, um, oh, yeah, 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 it was a little bit difficult. And when you unclip it, then uh, basically uh, you can mount this on the wall. You have some screw holes here and everything. And then on this top part, that basically just contains the electronics and the probably the thing which does the radio communication and then sends the data down into this lower unit which has the relay. I mean that's typical construction and we have seen similar switches from Zemi Smart which uh, and not only Zemi Smart but other makers as well that employ the same construction. So you definitely have to take this apart in order to mount it and then when you are when you are ready you just push this top back on and there are some clips on the four sides to clip it on. And in terms of the wire, wiring, it's very simple. So you have the neutral, you can't really see that, but that's the neutral and you have live, that's the next connection. So the second one is live and then everything right to that are the outputs. So live one, live two and live three. Obviously it only has live one, live one L1 because it's a one gang switch. But if you buy the two or a three gang version, you get the L1 and the L2 sorry L3, L2 and the L3 populated as well so you can see the wires and everything so wiring up is really easy you connect your main neutral and live to the sorry the end and the live terminal and then you connect the light whatever you want to control while well, lights between the L1 and obviously the neutral so you can see that for LEDs, it's 300 watts per gang, and for incandescent light, it's 700 gangs. And 16 amps is the max across all the connections. Well, of course, one gang is not going to be 16 amps. Okay. Yep, that's it. So, what we should do now is we should set this up. It should be very easy. I mean, here I have uh, connected a pigtail. And... Uh, well, the wiring is really messy, messy but you can see that uh, all the, the neutral is connected to the neutral and all the neutrals of the two lamps are also connected to the end. It's a little bit messy, but obviously it's not, going, it's not how this 
not everything is going to be wired to this single terminal in a real installation. So this is the fixed live, which goes to the live, and then the two other L1 and the L2 are connected to the lamps. So this should get it working. So let me just plug this in. Okay, so after connecting the lights, uh, it is working. You can see the two outputs are can be switched on. So let me just set it up. So this is my Google Home app. Yeah, I'm going to click on Add Metal Enable Device. And um, yeah, so I have this QR code here on this leaflet as well, but it looks like too small, so it won't be able to scan it. It's a little bit bigger on the device, but I don't want to flip it over just because of all the wires and everything. So I'm just going to enter the code. Um, it should be good enough by you know doing the code thing as well. Yep, and agree. So let's see how it works. It's going to take some time until it sets up the connection and everything, but uh, I'm probably just going to skip to that point. Okay, so the new device is added. And there should be two because it's a two gang switch, so it creates two separate devices. And uh, now the hunt begins because I have no idea where they are. At least both of them are on, so it should be... Oh, I'm pretty sure he put it into the office. Mm, no. Then, uh, mm, then those are blinds and meta device. Uh, vi oh, okay. So they got this uh, very generic names of meta device and uh, you know Zemi Smart Wi Fi Smart Switch. So if I go into them, well, there is nothing really on them. Basically, they just have an on and off uh, button function. And if I go into the settings, then obviously the device type is a switch. I can change it to something else. And um, yeah, that's the default. And of course I can rename them, but I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. And the other one is exactly the same. So I can turn it off. And then can turn it on. So they uh, work as completely independent uh, devices uh, because uh, they have two gangs. So if I would use this single gang device, then obviously that would just uh, appear as a single device. So again, you can change the device type. So if you have want, uh, want to have different icons and if you are change them, uh, change them to light, it's not really going to, you know, make any difference. But um, yeah. But if you change both of them to light, then uh, by default, Google groups them together. No, it doesn't. But sometimes it does. Like, you know, if, if I'm in this room, for example, this one, if I, you can see it actually two different lights. But maybe because it's a switch type, it doesn't do that. Or maybe it's a different, no. It, it, Surely it's not a different name, but anyway, you can change the device. Uh, sorry, you can change the icon so it represents different things, especially if you are not switching lights. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, the user interface changed a little because now you just have this big bulb of button. Um, yeah, and if I go into the automation and if I set up a new automation. Again, it's going to look different whether you are using Google, Alexa, or Apple, but uh, it, the function is pretty much the same. So I can say something that, um, um, like I can do something like at sunrise, sorry, at sunset every day, I want to turn on this light. So adjust home device, and that's the meta device, and I can turn it off, sorry, turn it on. Turn it on, action. So this is a simple automation that I can set up. So it automatically turn up, turns on one of these gangs. I think it was this one. Uh, whenever uh, there is a sunset. So, and then I would create another one to turn the lights off maybe at uh, 11 o'clock in the evening. And then I have a simple light which you know automatically turns on in the evening and turns off automatically. So this is what you can do. But um, yeah, there is not much else to say to be honest. Um, it's a simple switch. You can switch devices and you can also use your phone to switch them now. And 
yeah, this is how you wire them, which I explained a little bit earlier in the video. They work nice. It was very easy to set up. I did everything. I only cut out a couple of uh, maybe 10, 15 seconds in the middle when uh, Google was trying to set up the credentials. But if you're using another system, it might actually go even faster. So I think they are easy to set up, you know, quick to work with, and they provide, you know, smart functionality for simple light switches. So with these, you can replace an old light switches and just make them smart. If you are interested in this device, I'm going to leave uh, the uh, purchasing links in the video description. But that should be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.